Tell you what, let's take a stab at gradients with a blank document. Go to Editor and just click the button. We need to get back into Elements. File New. Blank File. Leave it at default, that's fine. Click OK. Gradients. We have a gradient tool. You select the gradient tool, you get the gradient options. You don't see them? Click here. Open them up. Now this right here, everything's default right now. If I click this little button right here, I can try another gradient if I want to. If I come over here, there's Spectrum. Say I don't like any of these, Andy. Well then go here and change to something else. You got all kinds of stuff. I'll show you how to make one too. All right, let's stick with this one for now. Understand how aggressive these things are. When you apply a gradient with a normal blending mode and an opacity of 100%, I don't care what's in that layer. It's gone bye-bye. It's going to be run over by a steamroller. If I come over here with a linear gradient, which is the first, and begin dragging, hold the shift key if you want it nice and straight. I don't care what was in that layer. It's not there anymore. That is. Now I can keep this up all day long. It'll keep rewriting itself as if the other one didn't exist. So the first thing I want to show you, because you can have a lot of fun with this, is try changing the blending mode and then apply it again. For example, we just went up and down. Change the blending mode to, oh, how about multiply? That's usually pretty aggressive. I'm going to go left and right this time. Watch what happens. You know, actually, that's pretty cool. If you're not aware of how you can create interesting gradients by using, well, different options over here and different blending modes over here to pile them, in a sense, one on top of each other, the gradients you're using is what everybody else is using. And I want to be unique. Now, sometimes unique is not good, but actually that doesn't look too bad. Might make a nice background for something. You say, Andy, I don't like any of the gradients. That's fine too. Click the Edit button right here. Now in Edit, you can choose to start with one of these gradients. Down here you have Colors. Up here you have Opacity Stops. You can make the type Solid or Noise. I'm not a big fan of the Noise one. Looks sandy. I usually do Solids, but you could change that. We're going to customize this one. I don't like that color right there, Andy. We'll click it. Then come over here and click in this big box here. Now you can choose a different color. Click OK. Okay, well, I don't like this color. Click it, but this time, don't click in the big box. Click the little down arrow right here. You can choose a specific color. Yeah, I like that. So you got those two changed. I want more colors. Well, come down here somewhere and click. Creates a new color. We can then come over here and change that one. You can keep this up all day long. Andy, I don't want one of the colors. Well, drag it off. Just drag down until it goes away. You want to move them? Click and drag them. All day long, you can make these changes. Now, the location down here, you can see it's telling you where it is. If you click on these, though, what is that? That's actually the mixing point between the two colors on either side. If I move it, I'm going to get more of this color as opposed to that one. And you can move that back and forth. Now, what are these? These are opacity stops. You can actually have opacity as one of, in a sense, your color. If I come here and say I want opacity stop here, just click up there. And when you select it, you get opacity down here. If I change that to zero and then I use this gradient, those areas will be transparent and whatever's behind them will come through. So you can create really any type of gradient you want. You say, well, I like this. Well, give it a name, my first gradient, and add here to the presets. And it came up right over here. You now have it. You can use it any time you want. You want to get rid of one, you can select it, right click your mouse, delete the gradient. And there you go. You've gotten rid of it. Total control. Now you have a plus sign up here. Now that will load a gradient file into the presets just like we did down here. You have a button here which actually saves them to a file. Now we talked about this in doing swatches and the process is the same. If you create a unique set of 
gradients, metallic gradients, uh, background gradients, whatever, and you want to save them, you can click this button and save them. Give them a name just like swatches. They will go into the gradient subfolder, which is important so you can get to them again. After you close and reopen the program, they'll be right here under that button. You click save, you got them. Click OK to get out of here. Gradients are fun to work with, but I think the most fun with gradients is understanding using different things like multiply and blending modes and opacities to create a gradient that actually is uniquely yours. Let's go ahead and close. And we don't need to save it, unless you want to. On to the next.